Hey, it's the pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity, the suntan superman, the king of Connecticut, Matt Granahan, back at Berman Law Group Podcast Studios, the Berman Team Podcast, with two very special guests, John Elite and Mike Dowd. I don't know what I'm doing here again, but I'm here again, and I'm happy to be here at the Berman Group in Boca Raton, Fort La- Boca Raton. Yeah, yeah. Boca and, Raton. Uh, and we're happy to have, uh, on this show, we're going to have uh, a special guest, an MMA fighter, uh, a Florida Hall of Famer, Matt Granahan. Am I saying it right? Granahan. Irishman? Granahan. Granahan. I am actually Irish, and I always say I may not look Irish, but you should see my temper. I, am a, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Yo, Shillelagh, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, fortunately, I had the Sicilian blessing. From there, the you go, there you I've go. I've heard yeah, you're resting all week. You've been resting <laughs> for, for uh, St. Patty's Day next week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for St. Patrick's Day. I hope everybody else is as well. And it's great to be here with you guys. I'm ready to get this thing started. Rock and roll. And hey, we got a friend of ours in a grandstand. Uh, up-and-coming ball player from Florida. Actually, originally New York. Our guy, Ben. Ben Stacks. Ben. Great to see you, Ben. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, he's in the shadows. In the shadows. <laughs> he's in the shadows. And we have our great staff here, Evan. All right, Evan's waving, giving a shout out. And his, and his protege to be. What's your name again, sir? Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel's here Gabriel, uh, in nice. the background. He nice. said he's going to keep it all tight for us as the oh, show yeah. progresses. So we're going to do some interesting things today. So everybody, let's look forward to it. Matt, just give a little background about yourself so people that don't know you. you know. Sure. You know, I people like to call me the pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity. Oh, a little, my God. It I sounds like the BBB. <laughs> Are you a BBB guy I'm or a, a, a PPP? You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a, of a troublemaker at times, a provocateur, if you will. I uh, recently caused the divorce of... The Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Oh, woo! Oh, which no. we can talk a little bit about. Do you know Sonny Beach? Just do you know? Do you, know, do you ever hear of a guy named Sonny Beach? Oh yeah. Okay, the I got a story. Sonny Beach, I got definitely. A story. I, I want to hear that. You yeah. know, Ric Flair was next door to me. Yeah, he had his gym when I had American Cowboy with my partner Cam. And oh yeah. He actually went partners after that. Uh, uh, Cam with uh, with uh, Terry. Uh, the Hulk with the Hulkster, with, yeah, yes, with, the, with Hogs down in Ebor City. So oh, we yeah. got a relationship, me and uh, Rick too. Nice. What'd you do to him? Well, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll get into that. I know you guys need to need to cut to an ad real quick, but we'll we'll get into that as this show progresses. Definitely. What, what, so, Mike, where, where are we going today? Where, where's, where are we driving this car? To? Well, first of all, you told me this is Phil Baroni story, who I've actually met. Uh, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to spoil the, the baby Wait, here right guys, now. I just want to. We wanted to cut, cut. my intro. Right? Yes. Yeah. So where? Well, we you... could do your intro at the end. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I didn't even flowing. think about that. Let's just yeah, keep yeah, yeah. flowing and bring you. You want to do that? You want? Okay, yeah, good, good. Flowing. I was waiting on doing the intro. Yeah, no, that's yeah, right. I know you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's why. Well, let's wait. do your intro at the okay. end. Okay, because we're moving. We're, okay, we're yeah, yeah. Little, let's rock we're getting a little, little flow. Am I right? Am I right, Evan? I agree. Beautiful. All right. Am I right, Junior? All right. I like that. All right. So here we are. Yes. Ready? Boom. Yeah. So I think you're going to talk about a little Phil Baroni story. You know Phil Baroni. I've known Phil, Phil for years. I managed Phil for a number of years. I uh, was a friend and training partner of mine. He's a he's a hard guy to handle, and I've got a I've got so many I've Phil Baroni so many stories. <laughs> oh my God, I got so many Phil Baroni stories. The last time I saw you, John, we did a press conference together in Jersey, Atlantic City, Atlantic City, uh, and uh, we talked about a possible fight between. Phil Baroni and Gotti the Third, and maybe a boxing match between you. Well, I'll tell you a funny story with that. So, when I go see Phil for the first time, I pull up to his house, and there's six cop cars there, and they're they're looking to arrest him. Uh, everybody's petrified of him, and I pull up, and in the media, people turned it around and said I had a problem with somebody, and I called the police. Uh, some nonsense. And when I pull up, wait, wait, you were there to meet him for the first time. Uh, Phil, me and Phil. I oh, know you Phil knew Phil. Oh, okay. He lived, he sound in, like you met him for the first time. No, no. He lived in my house, okay. but I haven't seen him in a couple of years. Okay. He used to live with me as a kid. Oh, you, you so raised know, him? Yeah, I know Phil very well. Oh, okay. And the father. The father. Oh, that's son. a different story. The father was a, a partner of mine on the street. He was a, a cop. Uh, and, and he was yeah, my partner. I, I heard of this guy, but go ahead. So, so, so when you, I pull up to Phil's house. In Nassau County. And we're setting up a fight. And, you know, when pay-per-view came to talk to Matt and myself. This is at the time? This is, uh, what, about a year? This was in August. This was back in August, yeah. right? So Over this past summer. August. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, I saw a little skit 
come up on YouTube or, or, or FaceTime or Facebook or one of those things. Yeah, with the police. Yeah. You were there with the police. Yeah, Did you yeah. call the police on Phil? Of course not. <laughs> right. So, you know, they turned the story around. The, the oh, haters. is that what happened? The haters well, the got haters, you? The haters, haters got you? The haters, haters got you? For me and Phil. So when I get there, the police are petrified, and I go, listen, rightfully so. Not petrified, but they don't want the problem. Why would you be there? Because we're setting up the, the pay-per-view fight. I had them go, go, oh. there to meet him. So it yeah. all just fell into place. Yeah. Exactly. We should probably tell Mike here what, what this was all about, this press conference. There was talk when Gotti the Third started fighting. He called Phil out to a fight because of he the history. Him out? Yeah, Gotti the Third called oh, Phil out to a fight because of the history with Phil and his father and with the Gambino family. Right. And that's something that we should let people know first so they understand this. And John, you could tell you you can explain that. What's the history of Phil Senior and Junior with yourself and the Gampino family? What happened was Phil was a cop, started working with me, the father, uh, did robberies with me. He actually was one of the guys that was with me when we robbed Tommy Karate for the people that said, you know, this didn't happen or that. that Phil was one of the guys. And and on the father's behalf, the father was uh not with his hands, not like his son. He ain't a tough guy. But otherwise, he had balls, and he wouldn't leave you. So the, the, the thing about the father, people got to understand, uh, the father was loyal to me, but in certain things. But when it came to money, the father had no loyalty to anybody, not even to his own son or his mother or anybody else. This was his downfall for sure. the father. Something I want to ask you, John. You know, Phil Senior was a gold star detective. He retired. Uh, when did he start working with you? At what point in his in his career on the was he still on the force or was it after? He, no, he was still on the force. He was getting off the force at that time, and uh, we started getting friendly through a cousin of his that grew up with me, another guy, Phil, and uh, we used to meet at the video stores and we'd talk and we'd hang out. He yeah. was a little standoffish at the beginning, yeah, and then I had to maneuver him a little bit. Sure, I got him closer, and as I got, how'd him you maneuver him? How'd you maneuver him? Little flash? The little flash the, bang? The little flash bang? <laughs> cash. You, you got. Atlantic City. Flash the cash, the baby. And he, and he uh, likes sports. So that yeah. was my end because I was a bookmaker, too. Okay. Uh, so yeah. we would talk but amongst sports. Amongst your other careers, you yeah, were, you yeah. were a bookmaker. Yeah, I was multifaceted. <laughs> multifaceted. So when I, when I get him uh, uh, close to me, uh, he's actually the one, and we'll get into Sammy a little bit also, he's the one that gives me the information that John Gotti Sr. and Sammy Gravano are going to get pinched in 1990. He gets the oh, information. Oh, he knew it? And well, Joe he wasn't with Caracapo and Steve. Uh, and those no, we're going to get into Mafia Cops. You're That's one another story. I'm yeah. not a Mafia Cop. <laughs> 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 I sh maybe I should have been. <laughs> I but work with a few of them. He's Well, what he is is he's very friendly with uh, Joe Coffey. So Joe's giving Joe him Joe Coffey is, is a big shot. Joe died. Yeah, yeah, yeah just recently, though. Oh, he died a couple years back. Yeah. Okay, well, recently. Well, yeah. <laughs> in, 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 in the chain the of life. In the chain of life, it was yeah. within the last five years, yeah. I think. And then we had Phil was partners also with Jimmy uh, Ionello. Right. Bill, uh, that was his name. Uh, the driver of Morgatow, the district attorney. Okay. Which Phil is working him for me, and then eventually I have Phil work him. Eventually I have him with me. And I got these guys... Uh, you know, giving me information and maneuver. But what does this have to do with getting Phil Baroni Jr. arrested at, at, in Long Island? Because at the time, Phil <laughs> Phil Phil Baroni Sr. lives around the corner from me in Woodhaven. Okay. I moved to Cherry Hill. Right. Phil comes with me, buys a house across the street. Keep an eye on you. Good cop. The smart. son, he's Phil smart. Baroni Jr., <laughs> is a tough guy, right? Yeah. Wild he's kid a, since he's a kid, a wrestler. Yeah. I, I liked the kid a lot. Everybody knows yeah, that. I, I love. I him. liked him because he had a hard life. Yeah. And you know when his father kind of left him out there. Oh yeah. And you know I would argue with the father, and then I took Phil Junior in my house. Okay, so and he lived with me for a while. Okay. So when Phil was a kid, he lived in Massapequa and Queens. You go back and forth because his mom was in Massapequa. Okay. He had an abusive stepfather. His mom was a good woman. His too. Mom, yeah, his mom was yeah. A good woman. Yeah, Phil had a tough time. He had an abusive stepfather. You think Massapequa? You think I wish we had Phil. In uh, Where is Phil right now? He's, he's in Mexico. Mexico. Oh, okay. He no, writes no. me every day. Oh, every day okay. he tells me to come okay. down there. I'm supposed to be going down there in April, and uh, All right. I may not so come So now back. you're at the, in front of I the house. Want it, while we're here, yeah. I want to get Phil a major fight. He deserves it. He's yeah. one of the tougher guys out there. Even at his age, he can handle himself in a ring. And one Has he slowed him, down a step or two? He slows. Like everybody slows, okay. but he's got yeah, a good jaw. He's got a good jaw. There you go. <laughs> and he's got balls. He's a tough guy. He comes yeah. forward, forward, forward. Right. Let me so explain. he's an exciting fighter. You know that. Let me explain the difference. Gotti the third. He's a tough kid. 
but his opponents have all been sponsored by Hunts. If you guys get the joke, you know that's an old that's tomato, an old joke. Tomato, tomato cans, tomato baby. Can yeah. So <laughs> Phil Phil Baroni has fought the very toughest, the very best. Frank Shamrock, you you list it. He's fought he fought for the Did title you have a fight in UFC. Off of Phil at all or no? I'm a little heavier than Phil, but I grappled a lot with okay. Phil and wrestled a lot with him, and he's very strong, yeah. a very good tendon strength, very good yeah, wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he still has and, strength. And Phil is. Always been good with his hands. Yeah. Always. Now, you know, you look at that bare knuckle boxing fight with Chris Lieben. I booked Phil for that fight, and it looks like he may have taken a dive. You know, Phil's always been a little bit, a little bit shady of a guy, but he's a great guy. He's a street guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to so tell you guys. Uh, I want to you think there story. might have been some cash laying for Listen, the dive? I mean, I, I, oh, definitely. You think so? Yeah, that, no. that guy went to prison. I can't picture who, Phil diving for nothing. So the though. guy who ran that bare knuckle boxing promotion. Well, let me tell you one thing to people. Now. I don't yeah. want to cut you up. Go <laughs> ahead. Phil, as a kid, came with me when I did some serious bang down doors and, and, and heists. Not the father. The, the father the did too. No, different. No, they never did they work together? Up, they didn't come together with me. Separate occasions. But Phil, little Phil... Came with me when we and the kid Joe Kane where he was with me on that. He was with me on a couple other things. Phil used to use some Phil of the cradles tough. I taught him. The cradle guys. Well, up. I told you know what I would do, so I yeah. wouldn't have to use weapons. We'd yeah, come in, I cradle said, guys Phil, up. Put him down. <laughs> Take him down. Tie him up. Do this. If you know what a cradle is, Phil had really good cradle cradles. <laughs> cradle guys up yeah. and hold them yeah. so that you don't have to. You know. But the Bob, father would I wrestled for an hour once. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Half, her Nelson, name? Yeah, what was that? Half Nelson Chicken Wing. The father came in though with guns only. Yeah. He, he wasn't with his hands. Yeah. So yeah. there's the difference of father. So you're at the Nashville County. You call the police on Phil. Go ahead. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know the Gotti people are calling you a rat. Yeah, you're no yeah, good. Yeah, you're yeah. a piece of shit. You called on Phil. Go ahead. Yeah. So you got you put Phil in the police car. What happens next? Wait, let's get the story straight. <laughs> I was sitting in a penitentiary in Brazil <laughs> when Gotti was ratting. Oh, okay. Let's, okay. let's clear story. it. Let's clear it out. But he only went there for lunch. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, lunchtime. Okay. <laughs> But I want to get into somebody else, and we're going to implement them here because he had a big mouth. Phil Baroni was a professional, tough guy fighter. Right. And Gotti's kid is a tough kid, and he's a fighter, professional. These guys are out there fighting. They put a fight deal together. Me and Matt talked. An idiot, Sammy Gravano, who, who can't box a, 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 a fruit basket. He used to pay. Sammy used to pay guys. Uh, to, to let him beat him up. He used to go to a gym there where my uncle used to go, famous gym in New York, and, and Sammy used Gleason's, to grease yeah. the owner Gleason's, so that yeah. so that uh, and let the guys so he let the guys hit him. He could say, to call Sammy Gravano a scumbag is insulting to used condoms. Let me oh, just really? say that. Okay. Yeah. Well, he he implemented himself in this, yeah. saying you know because he tried to get some popularity out of what we were doing and all of our names and this and that. So he he implements himself. Uh, we shouldn't be involved with people's kids. You fucking moron. They're professional fighters. It was a pay-per-view right, right. offering. We sat down. We were trying to put the deal together between all of us and the people that approached us. So, you know, he did a couple of videos. And, and Sammy Gravano said, uh, you don't ever talk about the family, first of all. This guy just wrecked the Gotti family. Yeah, family. exactly. He put them in. His son's <laughs> selling drugs. Exactly. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> He just uses break. it for content. Yeah. And, you know, there's a place he up the street. He was selling drugs, Sammy. Not yeah, I, I want to ask, God speaking bless. of Sammy Gravano, there's a place up the street here in Boca that we went and visited great guys uh, over at Valuetainment. You're their top guest. And they just did this whole thing with Sammy Gravano and, and Michael Francis. I want to ask you, what, what do you think about these? They're constantly glorifying this, this Sammy Gravano. Well, I, I tell everybody the problem is, and I just did something in, in Denmark about my friend Klaus, who was, uh, you know, one of the top gangsters in Europe, and we're still friends. We did time to, together in Brazil, and the glorification of these guys—they're not out doing work. Sammy yeah. used a gun once out of 19 murders. He keeps telling everybody what tough guy he is, what a killer he is. They don't put themselves in harm's way. They come in a room with six guys or seven guys, and they shoot a guy from the back of the head, and he never even did that. So you know, when people ask me, I say, talk specific. Sit across from me and let's talk about who did work. Because these guys didn't do any work. What's this have to do with Phil Baroni in the back of the patrol car in Nassau County? Well, it's what? all because ties Sammy, in because Sammy, Sammy, Sammy interjected. Sammy made a comment about it. Inter oh, interjected, interjected himself. Interjected. See, I got lost out in the woods here. Yeah, yeah. And Michael Francis. And I'm pretty sharp. Michael Francis, when he go, well, you know, I don't watch that stuff, to be yeah. honest with you. I do my own thing and that's it. 
But Michael's an intelligent speaker. Very, very great so host. So whatever went on in those shows with them going back and forth at each other. By the way, they put my picture up there in my name. To help themselves oh, get yeah. a little leverage. It's a lot of showmanship yeah. there. That was like a that was like WrestleMania there. The way but they since promoted Sammy's that. Too stupid. Yeah. Run I around. still don't know why Phil got. A, why'd you have Phil arrested? I still don't. Understand. <laughs> why did you have Phil arrested? That Sammy's team and I guess the guys who are you know putting out the fake news. Okay, like so why CNN. is he in the patrol car? Why is he put? I saw him. So he goes in the patrol car because. He had a fight with the guy that he was living with oh, next okay. door. So that's what I and wanted to And the guy know. was scared shit. And then when the police were there, they're scared to go in. Okay. Because, you know, Phil's a fucking Yeah, he's, they know he's crazy. And they know it's going to take about 10 of them to take him down. <laughs> yeah. So when I show up, I says, relax. Let me talk to him. He'll be a gentleman. He'll come out. Right. He's a good kid. He's just got a bad temper when someone fucks him over. Right, right. So he came out like a gentleman. And, you know, the, the, the police were good to him. He went in. He got arrested. And then the fake news came out with all these guys. So... You know, the jealousy of Phil, they're scared to fight Phil Baroni. Okay. And, you know, kid's tough. I keep saying the same thing. At yeah. this age, he ain't a kid. He's in mid-40s. Right. And you know. He's an older man. He, he, yeah. And he's, he's, and he's got a lot of man. fight in him still. Yeah, so. he's an older man. And, and uh, you know, like I said, this would be great for Gotti the Third if Gotti the Third could beat him. But they're trying to protect the young man so much. And the other aspect of it is so many people don't know that the Third is even fighting. Well, so we this would be a, great to get him exposure, national exposure, with a guy that's that's been on major shows for UFC Pride with Phil Baroni. This kid is fighting. This Gotti the Third, he's fighting on these local shows for the same promotion, Sesma. And I can tell you right yeah, now, I know Derek friend, Panza. Yeah. I talked to Derek Panza, who's this guy? And talked right. to Sesma. They wanted this fight. His father, Gotti Jr., didn't want him to. to, to take well, it. listen, as a father, you know you you protect your son. So I understand that part, yeah. right? As a father, he's protecting his son. But there's a lot of fighters out there now that, that Phil could still fight. Sure. And he was in Mexico cleaning up there. He, you know, yeah. fought a lot over there. And, you know, so he still got fight in him. I watched him. You know, you, everybody loses that little bit of a speed. But he makes it up with toughness and he makes sure. it up with punching power and, and technique. So he's still there's some guys that we can line him up with to fight. You want to hear a funny... Phil Baroni story. Yeah, that, yeah, now, yeah. this story kind of <laughs> relates to Phil's past with you. And, and uh, now, most of us guys, you know, we go to the gentlemen's clubs and we have a long night. We have a fun night. And then the next we day, dump a, we dump a grand. We exactly. Regret, we regret it. I don't it. go there. Exactly. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't done it in my life, but the I next, know people that the do. The next day, we wake up and we we're, we're regret all the money we've spent. Yeah. Well,. There's a little twist to that with this story. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, coaching clinics with Phil for wrestling teams, high school Burn wrestling water. teams, as Just well as, say, yeah, Burn he's got his Burma one, as well as for MMA schools. And we had just finished a, uh, a seminar clinic, and we went to the Gentleman's Club uh, in South Carolina. I won't say the name of the town when I when I tell you what well, what happened. And we we go in there, and the manager and the bouncer are both huge New York badass Phil Baroni fans. <laughs> the manager is from Kentucky, and he wants to get his picture taken with Phil. All this stuff, and we we're going in there and. Um, I'm enjoying myself. I have a couple young ladies, one on each, one on each knee, just uh, enjoying the evening. And we've been in there for a little while, so all our drinks are comped and everything. And so Phil comes over and he grabs me by the shoulder and says, well, "Get out of here! We're getting out of here." And I, I'm like, "Hey, I'm enjoying myself, man." He goes, "No." Go. So we start going towards the door, and he's got these big cargo shorts on, you know, the ones like, with all the pockets. And so. Uh, we go to the door, and this girl's chasing after him, and she goes, he robbed us. He robbed us. Oh, and so the oh, bouncer, oh, who's a huge fan. fan of Phil, this kid was an amateur fighter from Kentucky, and he says, what? And he says, he robbed us. She says, who? That guy. And, and the guy goes, the bouncer goes, get your stuff, young lady, and get out of here. <laughs> You're done for the night. This is my friend. This is my guest. <laughs> And, and Phil goes, oh yeah, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. And we go out to the we go out to the car, and he gets in, gets in. We get in the car, and he's pulling out these money bags. He's got party favor. He's got he's got a lot 
of cash and he, he, didn't he rob the rob the girls uh it went back he was back doing whatever he was doing with them in the locker room and he and he stole their money bags and we left and and i always say you know typically you spend a lot of money as a guy at the strip club, but not when you're hanging out with the New York badass <laughs> Phil Baroni. But I, the other thing about Phil, I'll tell you, and you know yeah. this, first off, yeah, you've seen him fight, right? Yeah. He dances, yeah. he sings, he's cocky oh, bastard, yeah. he's good looking kid, he's yeah. cocky. Great but robes. He's a crazy spender. He's like, you know, I don't want yeah. people to think that he's stealing the money for, for the money, because he really ain't. Yeah. He'll go next door now and buy the whole bar drinks. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Those right. girls have to be victims of what he did. <laughs> but if he was out with them, he'd buy him 10 bottles of champagne. He was crazy. That's why he, he got himself in trouble, because he just spent for everything. Yeah. So I have one money. little Phil Baroni story, but yeah. it's actually hilarious. So I go out one night with um, with Mike and Alex, who are friends of ours, right. through another venue. Uh, Mike's a retired cop, and Alex is a retired cop. And I, they want me to come out and, and they meet this guy, Phil Baroni, because I have a little bit of a celebrity thing, and they, Phil's got a little celebrity thing. So he wants us to meet each other, say hello, have a conversation, and a nice dinner, a steak dinner, which... Uh, What's the name of your show again? Oh, The 7-5? Yeah. The 7-5? Nice. And you want Joe, Spell it out. You want Joe Rogan? Uh, Joe Rogan, yeah. And you were on I, uh, I, uh, Coco... Uh, Coco Diaz. And I've, been, I've, been around, Coco. I've been around. And that. you're on a really good show now, the Elite Show. The, the Elite Show is yeah. my favorite yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. 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 Unless they do a TV series or my movie, I'll take that too. Yeah. But that's that's in the works. It's been in the works now for seven years, uh, as they say, right? So, no, Phil, yeah. Yeah. so Phil Baroni knows who I am, uh, but we've never met. And, and the guys, the cops are there, they're friends of mine. We're, we're, we're sitting there and we're having a dinner, a nice steakhouse. I forget, that could, if I said Capital One Grill, I could be wrong. It was a nice steakhouse. All I know is I wasn't paying and I'm good, right? Nice. <laughs> I'm good for a free <laughs> steak dinner. So we get inside, we're sitting down, and I meet this guy, Phil, nice guy. And I'm, I don't know him, and he's not a big guy. He's not an imposing guy, but you can see he's in really good shape yeah. still, you know? And I'm an old man now, so I know when someone's in good shape, I got to be careful, <laughs> right? Because if he's going to throw a left or a right, I either got to run. Oh, I still or, yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, but you're not as fast shape. as you used to be. Yeah, you're shape. not as fast as yeah. you used to be. So, yeah. but I'm working on. I, what are you threatening again. to hit? Are you gonna hit no, me? No, I'm just I mean, you're just, very close. Me to left uh, comes right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, so Phil, Phil's just sitting there at dinner with us, and we're talking about. Your qualifications, shape, sizes, and whatnot. So, so Phil, I said, so "What are you, five eight, five nine? To Phil Baron? <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm six foot all he, day long. Phil's about because I'm five eight. He's about well, I'm what heels. I'm five eight. He's about. <laughs> Phil's a little taller than me. He's about five nine, five ten. Okay, so I go five eight, five nine. You know, uh, and and he go, he looks at me like I just punched him with a left and a right, right? Yeah. And I go, and I look at the guy like, what? what I mean, what's that? I mean, I, I he's he's annoyed. Right? So I'm sitting with Mike, who's a monster, and Alex, they're monsters. So I, I, I had a little protection for a minute anyway. But I don't know. I don't know that this guy is fuming. So he gets up. He stands up. He goes, how tall do you think I am? I says, I don't know. 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I'm six foot. I stand next to him. I'm two inches over him at least. So at this point, you know, I know. Because he's telling everybody he's six foot tall. Right? I don't know. I don't know that. So All I, fighters. He sits back I, down. I just mix he sits back down. We eat. We finish dinner. He's like, yeah. He's like, he's got Wyatt. He's Wyatt. I don't know what's going on with this guy. What are you eating? All right, nice to meet you, Phil. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. We leave. I get a message the next day from Mike, the cop. Phil Maroney hasn't slept all night. He <laughs> wants to kill you. <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> For what? I mean, we had a good time. He was a nice oh, guy. Man. I was nice enough. He says, I'll you, tell you, let me tell you, you told him he was five foot eight. He hasn't. He said, for weeks, <laughs> for weeks, for, Listen, for weeks. Surprise for weeks, and her, he harassed Mike. I want to meet this guy. I'm fucking not five foot eight. I'll tell you something. Go ahead. By the way, Phil, I'm still behind you. I'm still in your corner. He was, <laughs> I don't know, 17, 18 years old, I guess, at the time. And just recently, I've seen it on a video, too. He was walking out of a place. We were, you know, he was young. I figured we were coming out of a restaurant, whatever. And a guy knew him. A kid knew him. And when he was walking out, he kind of went to like hit him, playing around. And Phil flinched, and he, and he Phil laughed. He goes, "That was funny." Boom! Hit him with a left hook, put the kid down. Oh yeah, I'll tell you. And, and I'm gonna tell you something because the kid hit him fucking around. And as a kid, my father used to tell me, "If they put your hands on him, hurt him." You know, yeah. you know, like your friends, anybody, not not hurt him, yeah. like punch him in the face, like he did. But go to his body. So then, just recently, I was watching a tape with Phil, and somebody did it to him. Actually, this is while he's fighting pro. Somebody did hit him to the body, yeah. a little playing around. You remember Phil yeah. dug into his ribs, 
and put him down. Oh, and yeah. I laughed. I says, well, the kid deserves Liver it. Liver punch. He had yeah. Boom. You know, I'll tell you, I, it was cute. So, I'll, you tell you, I'll tell you a funny, couple funny stories. So, I was back in, I think it was 2000, got, 2015. We each get one. We each get one. Come on, yeah, 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 but, but this is, this is, you'll, you'll love this. <laughs> oh, it's a combo. This is a combo. It's a story. combo. <laughs> so 2015, I'm supposed to be tagging with Phil at this pro wrestling show in Vegas, right? And I get over there. I land in Vegas, and I can't get a hold of him. And this is typical for him. He's flown off to Thailand. <laughs> now, he was, now, he was still married at the time. So I called Angela, his wife at the time. We sent pictures of him in bed together in Thailand just to piss him off. Oh, he was going ape shit. And I said, are you going to come back? For, you're going to fly back now? You know, so we can have the match. And Phil used to always stay at my house uh, in South Carolina when I had the house on Lake Murray in Irma. And I got so sick of having him at the house, so he hooked up with one of my neighbors. <laughs> she was a little older but attractive lady. And uh, I let him, I just had him stay there just to keep him away from me. And I go over there. And he's yelling at her, and he's calling her, you old hag, you old lady, because she, <laughs> whatever it was about. So, yeah, he's he's an uh, entertaining well, you guy. you got to take care yeah. of him. Hey, we got, a, we got three he's quarters of the show about Phil Baroni here. And was yeah. one other subject matter we wanted to talk about was, you said something about his dad worked with you? Oh, would you oh I, want, I had a question. Yeah, I had a question, and I'll let you guys talk about this. So I was going to ask, with uh, Mike Dowd at his background, and with law enforcement, Phil Baroni, Gold Star Detective, Phil Sr., and working with you, what do you think, Jan, are the similarities and differences between Mike Dowd and Phil Baroni Sr.? All right, so both guys in their situation, Mike all over East New York, Brownsville 7-5, had balls. Guys could say what they want. He walked in, doesn't matter if he did what he did, it was wrong or right. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about having the balls to do what he did. Because he dealt with some dangerous guys, shook them down, robbed them, did different things that you could get killed like this. They're not guys that weren't dangerous. It was very dangerous. Phil, on the other hand, had balls also. When people say, you know, talk about Phil, I stick up for him in a lot of ways. Because you walk into, and we robbed Tommy Karate's drug spot. Yeah. Most guys don't want to do it. He had no qualms with it. Face up, we didn't go with masks, we didn't do anything. So when you get guys like these guys like that, they're tougher. And they got more balls than all the gangsters I was on the street with. So when people tell me about gangsters, I'll tell you about gangsters too. These guys are gangsters. These guys were doing serious things. The guys that I know from the street, nine-tenths of them might say the same thing are frauds. They don't have no balls. They're not going to go. But Phil was, when he was on a job, he was, uh, you know, he was involved with narcotics. And he was, uh, what is that called when he's uh, a drug guy? And they're doing a drug bust. Yeah, going undercover. He's, a he's an undercover, yeah. yeah. So he's used to going through that door, so there was no qualms with me. Now, with his hands, he wasn't a tough guy. Mike will fight with his hands. and I lose most of my fights, but I'll fight. fight. But I'll fight. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I will fight, Irish. but I, I will lose most you're, of them. You're, but yeah. I'll do okay 40-60, 60-40. You guys know I grew up with a ton of Irish guys. <laughs> the McBrides, the McGovern's, oh, the yeah. Donahue's. <laughs> I grew up, and they all fight. Win or lose, the Cleary's, Murchie, <laughs> Tommy Murchie. This kid was a tough guy. These guys fight. Whether oh, yeah. win or lose, stupid or not, people say, ah, oh, this stupid. guy, fucking dummies <laughs> fighting five guys, got bats, yeah. but they fight. But they Irish fight. gangsters yeah. are very tough, Very too. tough. And, and now that it's St. Yeah. Paddy's Day, I want to say that because I do a lot of radio shows in Ireland. I talk about a professional fighter like John Duddy. These guys are serious guys. Jimmy Burke as a gangster, good fellas, tough guy. His son, Frankie, was a tough guy. Unfortunately, got killed young. So when I got involved with Irish gangsters, so Irish street guys, one thing they do is they have the pride to fight. Yeah. And when people say something different to me, I laugh. That's why I say when I hate when someone goes by a nationality. So oh, he's Italian and he's a gangster. Well, this guy's black and he's a tough guy too. Yeah. And don't yeah. give me that nonsense yeah, yeah, about, yeah. you know, well, this guy, because I grew up in those mixed neighborhoods. But the difference between Phil and Mike is Phil has no loyalty. And here's my biggest mistake as a kid. My father told me this. He said he doesn't take care of his own kid. Yeah. The dollar bill rules over his own kid. He let his mother wash toilets after I made him a multimillionaire, and he didn't take care of her. So what loyalty do you think he's going to have with you? And he's right. What was I thinking? Mike, on the other hand, he might not want to go in the pocket, the cheap ass. I'm cheap. But he comes out with it. Yeah, no, he's I'm like cheap. This. I got to help him take his hand. To go, I, I'm Mike. cheap because I know how to nah, live with the nine means I'm now. I'm All right? He, he's a gentleman. I got to monitor him. Otherwise, yeah, he's we, we both be, we'd both be sleeping on a beach tonight if I didn't monitor <laughs> this guy because he spends like it don't end. Who? You. 
Yeah, it goes. It goes he spends eight hundred dollars I said, Johnny, we can't spend eight hundred a night. This, you got, got two G nights worth of money. After that, it's over. I got you got holes. I got. I don't even have a whole pair. I got shorts. <laughs> I, I had to sell the other half. But, but uh, you saw his pants on the way in here. <laughs> as, as you know, they talk about mafia cops, yeah. uh, Epolito and and Car yeah. Car 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 whatever his name was. And you know, I did a show on him with another guy, Frankie uh, Steele, Frankie Pontillo, yeah. who's you know a street guy, gangster. His father did like fifty something years in prison. Sammy Cigarettes was a friend of mine, and I know him since I'm a kid. Used to hang around Tony Lee and Fat Andy and those guys. Anyway, when you talk about gang, these guys were serious guys. Like when yeah. people want to, you know, the funny thing is, that I had another guy, Ricky Dion, that was a, a cop in uh, Rhode Island, and guys in jail wouldn't talk to him. He's a big guy, tough guy. Because he was a cop, but on the street they deal with him. And yeah, they do business with him just like they're doing. Well, and then they, they got this bullshit thing about, oh, he's a cop. Then what are you doing business with him on the street? For? That, that actually leads me to this question uh, because one of the things, and, and, and I've talked to Larry Maz about this in this in this studio too. In Cosa Nostra, you're not supposed to talk to law enforcement, talk to the law. But if you look at the way the cartels do it in Mexico. They're interwoven with the federales. Oh yeah, and I mean you would so think. So the monsters here. That's uh, yeah, they are, but the, but it's the, but the rule, the quote unquote. Well, the rule, rule is this: yeah. you got to go through your boss. Like when yeah. I was talking to Phil Gotti, the father knew about it. When yeah. I was getting information to help Jeannie Gotti and Johnny Kinnick with their case, yeah. I brought Phil. So you know to to meet Jeannie and and different guys in Villa Russo on 101st Avenue. We met in the, the uh, Sally Port. So it's okay as long as they know of the guy. Sure, look at Whitey Bulger. They want to watch the guy. Whitey well, Bulger had a badge. Look at Greg Scarpa. You know, he had a badge. You know, he, he did work for the feds. Listen, most of that, and I, we talked about We this talked the about day. the other day. When the mob was, I'm talking about Vito Genovese, days, yeah. Lucky Luciana. These guys used to drop dimes on the other crews. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Here's yeah. where the, yeah. you know, the yeah. prohibition yeah. Sure. Well, we talk about loyalty with the mob shit, the, the loyalty stuff that you guys talk about. There's no loyalty because I'll tell you what, the minute someone, so, here, so here's, the, here's, what, here's one of the things that I fall down with the mob stuff that they talk yeah. about. So you, you got a mob guy and mob family. It's okay for the mob family to tell on another mob family, right? To the police. Yeah. All right. Now when a guy gets jammed up and he starts talking, he says to him, well, you shouldn't have talked. Well, you shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. And you go, oh, it's only good for you to say something. But you robbed my house, you, 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 you shoot yeah. my mother, and I can't say, I'm not allowed to call the police, though? Exactly. What the fuck you? Well, listen, I'm sitting in a penitentiary in Brazil, right? Yeah. The whole Bonanno family flips. The whole family. While I'm sitting there being loyal, leaving my family, my kids, and while I'm there, you know, who runs a Bureau of Prisons, uh, uh, jails as a Bureau of Prisons, mm -hmm. who moves you, is the marshals. There's no reason federal police come into a fucking jail unless you're debriefing or they want to talk to you about ratting. Okay. So Gotti himself says in 1998, I believe, when he goes to see his father, the feds were in a room with him. What were they doing there with you? The father didn't want him there, but they okayed his visit because at that point, in my, in my opinion, he was cooperating. Since yeah. then, because this would involve the marshals for that visit. This would involve the Bureau of Prisons, not the FBI. Exactly. So if the FBI is sitting there, you got the permission as an acting on the uh, acting boss to see the boss, your father, and your father was disgusted. He says, "What's this word closure?" But at that point, I believe he was an informant. But by 2005, he's an informant. There's no excuse. You sat down. You gave up uh, Danny Marino or couldn't get a bail because of you, and he had, and he ended up staying in prison because you were cooperating. Johnny Gams and different guys. Now, when you're cooperating against these guys, not only did they get stuck in jail and take pleas and go to jail, so with that nonsense, I had to testify against somebody. Yeah, you did. They all got, took pleas. They all stayed in jail. But you opened up dozens of investigations against other guys, and other guys flipped when they went to them. Guys like whoever, Mikey Scars or this guy or that guy that were flipping, or guys, well, Mikey flipped before him. But other guys that flipped because and started feeding information just like him because they knew he was in. So when you cannot flip that, and the problem with the mob is they, they're okay with certain guys ratting or certain guys sitting down. They, 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 they're so weak, they don't even say, he's yeah. a fucking rat. Well, now, think about why it. don't they say it? Because of what reason? He's a rat. They know he's a rat. They chased him. It was all over the headlines. So when they try to switch and, and, and flip the script, when, when a guy like me sitting in a penitentiary and you're talking and you're ratting and you're sitting down with the feds and you got the, the FBI in the jail with you, there's no reason for that FBI to be in that room with you when you're sitting there to talk you yeah. with your father. And the father knew that. He was disgusted. Of course. And he goes, do what you want because he was very sick at the time he was dying. 
And the biggest thing about them is how do they not, Gotti not, they spent so much energy, his sister on me and not on Sammy Gravano, who uh, really ridiculous. put him there and killed him in jails yeah. and made him suffer. Put their father in, in, to die in prison. Because it's really not but, about the father. They yeah. talk all that nonsense, but it's about themselves. And they have all those strong. trolls, too. But one other thing I wanted to mention that you, you talked mm -hmm. about, look at the example in the Colombo family with Greg Scarpa. And they knew. The bosses knew that Greg Scarpa was an informant. They knew that he was with the feds. But they gave him dirty work to do because they knew he could get away with it. So it, it made sense to work with the, with the government. Yeah, so what, is, what does it really mean then? Yeah. Well, like, yeah, I think Lucky Luciano, very famous guy. Yeah. Do you know that 17 years old, he, he talked, uh, he gave himself up and he was ratting with drugs. And he said, oh, I was only a kid at the time. What kind of fucking answer is that? So I say that anytime it's, yeah, it's okay for them. People if it benefits, okay, if it benefits yeah. them. Yeah. But oh, there oh, is no real loyalty for the, everybody. That's why I'm always talking no. about if you want to be in the street, be aware that there's no loyalty to you. Yeah. The only loyalty you're going to have is your own personal family members, and even sometimes that. Oh, that's, that's, that's not yourself. always. That's and, not guaranteed. No. That's not guaranteed so at all. It's, it, you know, <laughs> the loyalty you know, in life is about self-preservation. Right. Anybody, right. unless you're in the, in the Marines or the Army where guys are... Dying for each other. In the hole. They're in the foxhole with each other. Yeah. My friends, like Brian Bash, who I always talk about, or Lance, these guys were military, uh, in, you know, tough guys, Marines, uh, JD. These guys put their lives out there and saved people's lives. And, you know, guys were, you know, th these guys are. are Have you spoken to your friends heroes. about this Ukraine thing going on? And what's going on? I mean, you're Ukrainian, right? I'm Albanian. Oh, it's so Albanian. It sounds the same. It rhymes. It sounds so, the same. <laughs> listen, you want to talk it rhymes. about it? I give a quick overview of this. Go ahead. We want to hear it. This is about. That's enough. <laughs> this is about resetting the global economy with this bullshit about the United States. Our president, unfortunately, I don't want him to be mine, Joe Biden has destroyed this country in a year. Yeah. He made deals with Ukraine a couple of years prior to this Correct. war. Correct. We, remember they that? They pushed this yeah. agenda. They're not part of NATO. I'm sorry for the people, just like I was very sorry for our country, Albania and Kosovo, and the things we went through. Right, right. And nobody helped us for a long time before right. everybody was butchered. Those children and those women and those people that are sacrificed, I do feel bad for them. But we're not getting the whole story. Because we see so much fake news with BLM that it wasn't violent. They ain't burning anything down. That was George Soros that backed it. And people acting like they're naive. We've seen what happened with the pandemic. So now we know we cannot trust our media anymore. We're like any third world country of propaganda. Uh, th th uh, yeah. And everybody's <coughs> after Putin right now. This is the problem. But they're not talking about chemical warfare that it, it, that's on different properties in Ukraine. Why not? Why are we talking about oil shortages when we have no oil shortage? There's no oil shortage. Why are we talking about doing business with Iran? Why is Russia brokering that deal with the Iran nuclear program? Why are we talking about doing business with Venezuela when you said they were our enemy? Why are you sending $4 billion to Iran with, with Obama? And if you look at Obama years ago, he got caught on a hot mic. So they've been after fucking with Putin for a long time. Right. So we're not getting the true story. No, they're actually, they're, they're, they're working with Putin. They're, it, not, they're, not, they're working with And it doesn't mean that I don't sympathize with those people in Ukraine right. that are dying. Yeah, no, that's a but shit. I don't sympathize It's a tragedy with, to look at that I don't shit. sympathize with horrible. the governments. The governments yeah, are there's, full there's, of shit. The, John, let me and see. And I think the only president, and we all know who I'm going to say, is the only one that actually loved America, cared about America, didn't make a dime. Lost money. He lost billions. When guys like Obama come into office... And he's worth a billion dollars now. How did that happen on the, on a four hundred thousand dollars salary? Yeah, no, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you the this great. This is the problem. People are so. You're gonna get us banned, John. Right, Would you stop? Know. You're gonna get us fucking you one shadow banned. When yeah. they say and they con the public that are, uh, are naive or don't understand politics, and they say, "Well, will you be willing to pay five dollars a gallon for 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 gas?" Well, I would for the Ukrainian people. This is the United States yes. again, diverting yeah. what's going on in this country. They're all trying to stay rich. And I don't know any kid from my neighborhood that comes from the hood that can afford an electric car. Exactly. And then on top of that, those cars are 50, 60, 70,000. Exactly. Then you got to have stations. Yeah. But how are these fucking people in my neighborhood going to afford this? And then we're dependent on communist China because they own two thirds of the minerals in the yeah. Congo. I thought and Biden's third, son. I thought Biden's, Biden's son owns a, third. owns a third of the fucking so the let, Congo. So let's stop the bullshit with this United States fucking propaganda. We can't even yeah. believe what we Absolutely. hear on the news anymore. And I'll tell you, John, I can sum it up this way, and it's a great way to dissect the word. You use the word politics. And Larry Mazza said that when he was in this studio. Let's break down the word. Poly means many, 
and ticks are blood sucking insects. Politics. Oh, very good. I like yeah. that. Do you see what Biden has done to this country in a year? Is any, you know how unsafe the world is? No, today? here's what I want to know, John. Give me a minute. All right, I, I want to know, and, and listen, we were born Democrats. Were you born a Democrat? Everybody was yeah. middle of the road before. Right. I was now born a Democrat. To the left. It's well, and, and, and I'm not against Democrat. Either people. am I. I like Joe Manchin. What I want to know is where's those 38%? Holy show, show, me, show me the. That, see, I see these polls. Matt, I see these polls. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you. It says 38 percent of the country agrees with this guy. It was just like oh. the other election. Can you show me one? Yeah, they vote. Who, ten so times. One guy. Then tell, tell me who he is. Ten the, times they vote. Well, like she. The I want to know who get, or she is. Not to get too political, but it's women's. I just want to know. International Women's Month, and the Democrats had a great candidate in this last election was Tulsi Gabbard. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah right. she's oh, fantastic. They attacked her. They attacked and her. they and they drummed her out of the party. And the Democrats, just to say my two cents, Democrats used to be the party of the working people. Unions, you know, um, helping people and with the medical, uh, whatever. Now they've gone so far out there. Yeah, well, they're it's, communists. It's, it's crazy. Lot. Yeah, but also with all this stuff of uh, of trying to get people uh, canceled. Well, look at that big yeah, bird in New York, uh, that oh, dummy, yeah. uh, De Blasio. Look, look, look big at bird. He's a <laughs> Pepe Le Pew. He's a Marxist. <laughs> Last <laughs> year, they got Pepe Le Pew canceled, the cartoon yeah. character. Yeah, it's Come just on. crazy. Well, it's crazy. People are so weak to put up with this, but the parents are fighting back now. Yeah. But I want to tell you one thing, because you brought up Women's Month, and hopefully Victoria comes on. And uh, on my show, and uh, oh, maybe she, she'll she, maybe she'll she's pop an in. Attorney here. Maybe she'll pop in or call in. Group. She's in, uh, she's in Dominican Republic right, right now. Yeah, I interviewed her. Yeah, and yeah. she's uh, also in Sports Illustrated. Yeah, that, great announcement to make. She was our last guest here in the studio. What's her full and, name? Victoria uh, what? Victoria Vesh. Her Vesh. dad is actually Italian from the Bronx. Her oh, mom is southern. Uh, is southern from North Carolina. Uh, great young lady, and she's uh, she's now uh, part of Sports Illustrated swimsuit. So we want to give her a huge congratulations. She's, uh, I believe, excuse me, filming in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I, 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 I'd like to be a swimsuit uh, designer. We, just, yeah. just, just for the day. We want to see, <laughs> hopefully we we'll see her in Christy Martin. People that don't know who she is. Boxer. She, yeah. Yep, you, you know. Is uh, one of the f original faces of yeah. women boxing. I train. I trained with it. a girl. I trained with a girl that fought Christy Martin. Uh, her name was Christine Rocket Robinson. If you watch, she fought Christy Martin. She fought Layla Ali. Everybody forgets about. If you want to get Rocket on, I'd love to get get her on your show. She's a great boxer, big, heavy handed. And when I used to train with boxers, I used to train in what we called shoot boxing. Like take them down, they box me, and I, I defend and, and shoot for their legs, tie them up. And um, she's a great female boxer. She trained some female fighters that I was coaching uh, back 10, 12 years ago. Was she at the Salt Shack? Christine Rocket Robinson. Ben. Hey, Ben. Was she at the Salt Shack last night? This is Christine Rockin' Robinson? She, she might be. Was she at the she Salt Shack? Been. You brought us to the Salt Shack last night, right? She was a great boxer, Rockin' Robinson. Yeah. She fought Christine Martin. I got to tell you something. I got to go back to the... Uh, she might have been. I got to go back to politics for a second. <laughs> I got to finish with politics. Oh, here, because he's got a bug in his ass. He's got to go. I, I, it is your you show. It is your show. I'm going to tell All you right. why. <laughs> right now. <I laughs> We're going to move around to Matt. My show is about uniting people, not dividing people. That's true. Yes. That's right. I don't like how they try to con people and oh, cause yeah. the BLM division. Sure. Yet, if you cared about black lives, Spanish well, lives, any life that doesn't Asian have money, lives. I got middle one. class down, I got how one can for they you afford that. gas prices of course. at 6, and, and 7, wait. 8, 9? And they're going to keep going. And now Biden's new excuses, that's why they wanted the war. To blame Putin exactly. that our gas prices are up, but has nothing I got to do one with. for you guys. I got one for you guys. Well, how about food prices? I got one for you guys. Food. I can't. I, I, I want to know who's oh, buying lunch. Go ahead, tell me. Guys, I got Fuck one food for you. prices. I want to know who's Listen buying lunch. Listen to this. This is kind of. Oh, oh. I'll get you. This will kind of sum it up, guys. You sure? This will I'll hold you to your word. <laughs> you, you, this will kind of <laughs> sum it up. I don't keep filling you up on water. But let me let me. So let me ask you guys this. You mentioned you mentioned BLM, and everybody can agree that Black Lives Matter, right? Right? Okay. And you mentioned the wars in international politics. Well, let's think about this, okay? Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, she had Gaddafi whacked. This is the whole, this is the criminal. Listen, she's the she's, she had, she's the head well, listen gangster. To this, Mike. She's the head gangster. This, Mike. Yeah, listen. She's the head gangster. Listen to this. Absolutely. Straight up. She had Gaddafi whacked in Libya, okay? That was the most stable state in the Middle East. Yeah. And but listen to this. After she had him taken out, Libya became a failed state. Right. And you know what the bedrock of their economy is? 
black African slavery. Black Africans are sold every day in open slave markets in wow. Libya in 2022. So you want to say black lives matter? You want to say we care about people in the world? Everybody talking about Ukraine? What about Libya? What about what Hillary Clinton did to, to create that, our own country did to create that situation in Libya? So it's all a con. You know, it's all a work. Obama's from Chicago. He did nothing yeah. for the inner cities. He did nothing for school, universities, and, and black colleges. Trump had to do it. And he gave 10 years through Tim Scott in his program. And I got to give hats off to Tim Scott because he's talking about education. When these people are trying South to Carolina. hold the middle class down. Nice guy, and too. Trying gentleman. to keep the lower class Absolute gentleman. in the sewer. They don't care about black lives. They don't care about Spanish. They only care about the top 1%. And this is what this is about. To crush the rest of the middle class in America, like everywhere else, and equal equality in, from other countries, Venezuela and Iran. All of a sudden, you got Biden that wants to do business with Iran and Venezuela, where they've been bad mouthing him for the last 50 years that he's been in, involved in politics. Look, they're all failed coups. You know, people don't realize this. Listen. They're all failed coup, coup attempts. The ones that are against us, pretty much. You go to Iraq, right? There was a failed coup attempt there. Yeah. You go to Iran, yeah, there was yeah, a failed yeah, coup attempt too. there. Yeah. Go to Ukraine, a failed coup. coup. But when you actually, we won a coup attempt in in, in Ukraine. In Ukraine yeah. But but now this is a new coup. Yeah, this yeah, is a new exactly. coup. Exactly. Yeah, when you run for a government position in this country, you run under the idea, the idea, and our, our belief in our country of our constitution. When it doesn't say anywhere in there where we have to look out for Iran before the United States. Sure. Because you want to send four billion, why don't you send four billion to the inner city of Chicago so those kids exactly. stop killing each we other? You do nothing about Why don't you do something about Brownsville, Brooklyn? Why don't you do something about Camden, uh -huh. New Jersey? Hey John. Why don't you do something John, with two Maryland, million people, Baltimore, Maryland, two million Detroit. people fled Ukraine, two million people crossed into Texas and Arizona this year. Do you know how many people yeah. died in Ukraine right now, uh, civilians? They say around five hundred. Let's triple that number and say it's 1,500. Do you know how many by opening our border, our war on opioids? There's 150,000 kids are going to die this year oh, from yeah. opioids. Absolutely. Think about those And we have the Berman Group to represent. Those same, uh, the, 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 those same people want to put walls around their houses, but they won't put a wall around uh, uh, Texas, Arizona, Me around Mexico, yeah. right, to, to stop this. But they want to go to Ukraine and tell us we're going to fight that war. We're going to help them. How about helping everybody that's exactly. dying here? They talk fifty thousand, and, and again, I feel bad. For yeah, this they speak Ukraine. nonstop now. It's that's it's a word propaganda. It was nonstop for two years. Well, this is the new. And now this, this is, is the new, new diversion. And, and 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 what they do is it's very easy to manipulate. The minuscule-minded miscreants, I say, and not the pe most people are good people. Hey, that's but most a God people, word. Mis miscreants, yeah, miscreants. Uh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a that's a long, yeah, it's, it's an educated he word. He stole that from me. It's an educated yeah, word. He stole that, that from me. I used to say that on my own Instead of saying punk, they say miscreant. It sounds educated. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. I don't mean punk, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but think punk. about think about not Chicago. jail punk. That's How many jail people punk. die every weekend in Chicago <laughs> and Detroit? You know, and and all, you're all you're hearing, all you're hearing, twenty four seven on the news now is Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. But who there's can, like ten wars who going can on actually in the world. Believe, and that's all you're hearing. Who can believe the media? Yeah. This is the problem. Even if you're conning the people in this country, you're not conning the people around the world. They lost respect for us because sure. of the bullshit that they see. So sure. the way oh, yeah. we see the bullshit that no, they attack no Trump, respect. we know what that. It doesn't matter. They attack them on every front, nonstop for years because they're afraid of. Are you excited? Tells, so when they do it to him, now Putin's their new target. Are you a little excited, so, Johnny? No one, yeah, because, I, I, because okay. so many kids' lives are. are you all gassed ruined. up here. I'm gassed up. Yeah, because you're ready. You everybody. If they gave us guns, what, if something. they gave us guns, what would you do? Would you go in? If it was legal, yeah. go where? Legit, wherever. To fight for, 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 for this fight. country? No, no, to no, fight. I say, the, the I right fight. Say, fight for this country in here. here. No, I, I, I wouldn't fight for, for this government, no. No, I hate this government. Because yeah. nine-tenths of them are corrupt now. Yeah, yeah. And they're not like Donald Trump, right. who is just a true American, whether they like him or not. Is He loves America. Do you remember America. the picture? And uh, people are trying to say, you know what? Because he's not for this bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just, well, let me, let me tell you, too. Donald Trump was the only president since... Eisenhower, who you who talked about the military industrial complex, yeah, the only yeah. president, yeah, he, the he's only he president. left it yeah. in peace, exactly. The world's ready to explode because of these people. He, he dealt with construction in New York. He knew how to deal with. He's people. a businessman. He man. knows BS. Here's, when he sees here's it. my he knows, yeah. here's my simple minded. And he take. talks straight. He has no faith. The rest of these politicians. Have faith here's my simple minded the Brooklyn cop take on this. Okay, 
Trump fucked everything up. He walked in and fucked up their game. Yeah, I, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, that's why we went to that G seven or G eight meeting. Yeah. He, they wouldn't even talk to him. They were, and they, when they were talking, oh. they were yelling at him like, Do you, "You don't understand." You're telling us we can't drill <laughs> because of the Green Deal. Yet every country is drilling. Yeah. So how does that make sense? Who, what idiots buying that? And then you got John Kerry, the guy who lied and said he was on a U boat during the war. No. He's flying all over. Oh, the place. No, no, jet no, no. Never mind that. Oh, never so mind that. You care U about green, shit. but you're flying all Never mind the U boat. We're talking about the he green. Got, they care about is you guys ain't even listening to me it's anymore. Right. What the fuck? I'm gonna leave. We you know, out. that U boat. That never mind the U boat. I'm sure got me confused. He went over to what Iraq and Iran and spoke to these people while Trump was president and said, "Chill out. We're gonna get him out." Remember this? Oh, yeah. Am I wrong? Am I am I telling something wrong? You got Budacek, that imbecile's head of transportation, and he says, well, if you got to spend $9 a gallon, whatever, he said, that's okay. Yeah, you filthy rich bastard. How about the guys from my neighborhood don't, don't make 20000 a year? Yeah, tell, him to, tell him to How ask his husband. food on the table when they're... When what, about, they're when, what about people tell that Buttigieg drive... Tell ask his husband for some money. ...that drive for part of their jobs. The cost of gas makes it so they don't Trucks. even want to work well, I mean, you're a truck driver. Yeah. You don't want to drive food Any kind of delivery costs? driver, yeah. Oh, believe me, the cost of food is almost double. All right, it's we almost just, double. We went all the way off. The well, I want I want to end it on a on a different note, and I just one word, and that word is woo. I caused a little bit of stir with the nature boy Ric Flair, and I want to address that because you brought it up at the top of the show. And it relates here to TBT and the Berman team. I'm gonna just tell this quickly. I've known Ric Flair for years. We, we used to party uh, years ago when I bounced at a bar uh, uh, in uh, Lake Murray, on Lake Murray, uh, Docksides. He used to come there when he was married to Tiffany. This was like 15 years ago. And I don't know, she was like wife number three. And um, he used to go there and drown his sorrows because he was having all these problems with Tiffany. Tiffany was so snotty. She was a, a trainer at my old gym, and she would just never look at you. And I, and I, try, <laughs> and I, and I tried to give Rick advice back then. But the king doesn't give advice because wise men don't need it and fools never heed it. I was trying to tell him, look out for these gold diggers. Well, you fast forward to now. I reached out to Rick to be on the show here. With us? Uh, with us. Hmm. He would have been in this room if, if this didn't happen. And I got to explain what happened here, clear this up, because this has been all over the media. So I, I reached out to the nature boy about being here. And the Berman team. And and he and I, around 2015, there was this beautiful girl, Mexican-Lebanese combination, killer body, beautiful girl that I had with me on Rick's boat in Lake Lanier in Georgia. We stayed with him and Wendy when he and Wendy were first getting together. And he said, he says, he said, man, you got any pictures or any videos? You know, that girl you were with? He goes, send them to me, man. He goes, come on, come on, send them to the nature boy. So I said, no, you know, we're not together, but I was with my beautiful Venezuelan girl, Gloria Diferente, and I had a lovely Dominican that I met when I was flying out to California back in November to do um, the follow-up on my book, Rough and Tumble, which you can buy at E-R-I-K-P-A-U-L-S-O-N.com, the definitive history oh. of MMA and pro wrestling. And as I was flying, I met this beautiful Dominican woman. She was, I mean, you want to talk about voluptuous. And uh, she sent... I'm going to wipe she, my chin. She Hold sent on. me some... Uh, she sent me <laughs> some videos of herself. She wanted to, you know, sent me some videos of herself, some private videos. Uh, I've uh, never heard of that. And she was, uh, <laughs> she was giving herself some pleasure. So I, of course, sent him to the Nate. And he says, oh, man, this is spectacular. Well, then, you know, later ah. that afternoon, I get a phone call, and I was real busy. And he goes, he goes, man, you got to call Wendy, and you got to let her know. Those videos, you make to send them to your friend, right? Your other friend, not to me. <laughs> and I said, okay, you know, whatever. So I was busy. I kind of put it out of my mind. And then later that night, oh, Matt, all in caps, kill yourself. You never called Wendy. You're causing me so many trouble, so much trouble, you bastard. And then his next message, his next message was, oh, those girls you send me those videos of, they don't stack up to Wendy. So obviously oh, she was looking yeah, at oh, yeah. oh, oh, you know. Yeah, here we go. So yeah. I am a I've been personality. Here. I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> also personality on the, the Hannibal TV. So when I found out that they were splitting up, I made it 
you know, a little story about it, you know, little videos. So <laughs> then the next Not thing, a naked one. with. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kind of letting people know and, and hiding his number, of course. And then, uh, and then I reached out to Wendy. They were in Rosemary Beach on the west side. Sent her a picture of myself in the pool. She and I are flirting back and forth. She says, he's unbearable. You know, maybe he come for some mimosas, whatever. She turns around, sends that to him. And then, and then I get a message that night of Rick with my picture. And, oh, he's threatening me. He's going he's gonna to find me. He's going to find where I live. And I said, Rick, I wish you nothing but the best, you and Wendy. He said, why don't you send her a picture of your little prick? And I said, well, I can't fit it in the in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the long, wide-angle uh, lens. So then, yeah, so in, and then, uh, yeah, I wished him the best, and he's F you, all yeah, this. Yeah. So we made another story about it. So a couple days later, I get a phone call, private number. And I, you know, I happened to, you know, he thought it was your goes, probation officer. I know. <laughs> exactly. So I pick <laughs> it up. Never know. It's, it's Rick. He says, this is Rick. Ooh. He says, he says, you son of a bitch. He says, this is your last warning. If you go near Rosemary, if you go near Rosemary, I'm going to punch you down. And I said, calm down, Rick. I said, it's cool. It's all good. I said, I'm just joking. I'm just playing around, joking with her. He goes, a joke is when everyone's laughing. And I'm not laughing. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it, you know, so, that, so I made a big story about it. And I went on a wrestling show and confronted his late son, Reed Flair's best friend and protege. Reed was a great amateur wrestler. And I had to take my coat off and, and just give the little boy a lesson. You know, choked him out, threw him oh. in the, slapped him in the figure four. And I got on the mic and I said, Rick. I stole your woman, and I stole your hold. <laughs> oh, my God. And if you still had it, I'd steal your gold. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so that's a story that's going on. Get you guys caught up to it. So kind of take the take the pressure off all this politics. Yeah. Something a little more yeah. Well, I want to see Hulk Hogan. That's what I'm going to try to get on. Monday night. Yeah. Uh, Monday night. Um, he does the karaoke out in... Uh, I had a sunny beach story. No one wants to I hear my hear sunny beach Let's story. Close. You want to close with the sunny beach story? Because he and Massimo's... Waiting for us. Oh yeah, you got. You want? Well, should, I put, should I put it off for something else? Yeah, put it off. Look, I can put yeah, it off. Put there. it on a mass pulse. Yeah. Nah, you 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 win everybody's appetite. Why don't you? You want to close? Oh, it? we no. want to not watch okay, the next okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll hear the okay. Sunny Beach yeah. story yeah. on the next one. <laughs> Everybody, uh, if you're looking for me, uh, True John Elite on Instagram, uh, my website JohnElite.com, and anybody wants any uh, bats that we sign, uh, they're on my website. Reach out to us. My books. Mafia International. I have five books on on the site. Uh, you guys can go on there, pictures, photos, and we have new cigars coming out. The uh, the elite uh, cigar and uh, uh, wine, hopefully in the near future. Uh, the right, Mike everybody. the Mike Dowd, anywhere. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> you can you can check me out on Facebook, Matthew J. Granahan. Like I said, I may not look Irish, but you should see my temper. Uh, or on uh, Instagram, King of Connecticut, spelled out. <laughs> that big temper. Hit the yeah. subscribe button if you like the show, and but his tongue is several huge. good guests in the next couple of weeks coming on. Everybody, everybody, have a great uh, weekend, and uh, God bless me with the Ukrainian people, the Russian people, and the end to the war. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.